Hey everyone, my name is Chloe and today I'm here to talk about my most anticipated books for May. And you guys, it is a list. It is a long list. So grab a cup of coffee, grab a tea, a soda, whatever you drink, your drink of choice, and let's talk about these books. So uh, May is like this the season of spring and the beginning of summer releases. As you will see from these first couple titles, there's so many books with summer in the title that I feel like that could have been its own video. But Let's talk about it. I'm a little overwhelmed, so let's just get into it. The first date is May 7th, and we have This Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune. So Carly Fortune has written many, many popular books, one I loved, one I didn't like. And uh, this one is about uh, this girl. She's a tourist. He's a local. It's on Prince Edward Island. What she doesn't know the first summer is that this guy that she is kind of like – having a thing with is her best friend's little brother. And every year she goes back to see her best friend and they have like a little thing. She thinks it's like no strings attached or whatever, but then of course her heart starts to get into it. And so I think there's probably a connection there. Um, I don't know. I like, it's kind of hard to believe, but I think it can be cute. We'll see. I'm like cautiously optimistic. Then we have uh, Summer After Summer by Lauren Bailey. This is a, a persuasion retelling, um, and it says for fans of Emily Henry and Rebecca Searle, and I like both those authors, so yeah. Um, this is about a woman's marriage who's falling apart. She goes back to the Hamptons um, to help her dad and sister sell the family home, and now I think it's unclear if she is divorced or not or if her marriage is just failing, but um, the house that they're selling there in the Hamptons is where her mother died, where she met the love of her life, who's kind of the one who got away. And now um, they have, like, the one who got away and she had a tumultuous relationship where they broke up many, many times. And now that her marriage is over, um, she is back. They've both changed and it's maybe fifth time's a charm. And, like, I feel like I love first love, second chance, but fifth time, maybe not. But the Hamptons, summer vibes, I'm here for it. Next is Summer at the Saint by Mary Kay Andrews. So Mary Kay Andrews is well known for her spring and summer books. And this one I imagine will be no different. It's probably going to be a, a chunker. I don't know. But this is about uh, the Saint Cecilia. So the Saint Cecilia is a landmark hotel on the coast of Georgia. And uh, this gal, she is kind of like from a white collar family. This is a very prestigious place. So it's they say you're either from the Saint or you ain't. And she is not one. But she gets a job there and starts working there and eventually marries the boss's son. And so she, now it's years later, she's widowed and she inherits this hotel. The hotel is no longer the like thriving thing that it once was. And so she is trying to like restore it, but her brother-in-law is against her. There's a lot of secrets. It says, uh, it's a landmark hotel on the coast of Georgia where traditions run deep and scandals run deeper. So I imagine as she's trying to revive things, secrets are going to come up. Things are going to come up that are going to get in her way. But Mary Kay Andrews always does an entertaining read. Um, then we have Always Anthony by Terry Liebenson. So this is number eight in the um, Emmy and Friends graphic novel series. This is a middle grade graphic novel series that I really enjoy. And this is about a popular boy named Anthony and a really shy girl named Leah. And they come together to confront a bully. Um, like I said, I just really enjoy this series. Next is The Summer Swap by Sarah Morgan, another author that I will never miss a book from. Um, this is about a 70-year-old woman who goes back to Cape Cod where she said she would never go because there are bad memories with her and her husband, and she's got a daughter who, like, loved her husband. I mean, her husband is her dad, you know, um, and she, like, really adored her dad. Her dad is now dead. She goes back for some reason. Um, this seven-year-old woman goes back and finds like a squatter living in her house who is a med school dropout that wants to be an artist. And they become friends and all like live together there, I think. And um, her grandson comes into the picture. And I think the artist and the grandson have a relationship. And it's like remaking memories at this Cape Cod house. Sounds sweet. Next is The Best Life Book Club by Sheila Roberts. This, Sheila Roberts is one of those authors that does women's fiction and romance, and I think this is definitely a women's fiction. This is about a woman who leaves Seattle with her nine-year-old daughter um, after she has been cheated on and, you know, her marriage has ended, and she goes, she's a librarian, um, or no, she's not a librarian. I think she works in a publishing house or something, and she starts a book club with her neighbors who are also, one's uh, an older widow, and one is, I think, has just been through a divorce, and her, along with the widow's sister, um, they all join a book, become a book club. And I think it's about like 
their love of books and also their desire to start over and sounds really sweet and exactly like the kind of book that I will love. Next is Bits and Pieces, My Mother, Brother, and Me by Whoopi Goldberg. So this is a memoir about her mother and brother who both passed away um, I, sometime in her life and just how impactful they were and how they made her who she is. And I, I love Whoopi Goldberg, and so I will definitely read her memoir. Next is The Dare by Natasha Preston. This is about senior pranks gone wrong. So it's about these seniors in high school. One, They get dared to um, drive on, I forget what it's called, uh, Danger Alley with no headlights. So it's like a 10-mile strip of curvy roads. Um, of course, something happens. They all try to keep it a secret to protect their futures, and I'm sure that secret comes out. It's a thriller. Sounds um, like something really quick and easy to read, uh, like a YA thriller. I like them. Next is You Never Know by Tom Selleck. So another memoir that is coming out that just intrigues me because I think his career was kind of accidental and I just would love to hear his story. I love memoirs, so there's really not one that I won't read. Um, And then we have And Then Boom by Lisa Phipps. So Lisa Phipps is a middle grade author who wrote Starfish, which I loved. And this book is about a boy who his mother like is not, will not stay around. She is just off to the next thing all the time. So I think he lives with his grandmother and then they lose their house. And he really finds solace in like comic books and writing comic books and having those and then boom moments when like everything changes. And so he's able to, they're able to get a um, home in a trailer park and then some Something happens that leaves him alone, and he does not tell anybody that he's alone. He just continually lives alone. Well, the end of the school year obviously poses problems because he's no longer getting free meals, and um, yeah, things happen. He comes upon a like emaciated puppy or dog and her two little puppies, and I don't know. I just the starfish was so good that I want to try what she has to write. And these books are also told in verse, so they're really quick to read and just a great way to spend an hour or two. I'm sure. Next, we have the Joy Challenge, um, which is Discover the Ancient Secret to Experiencing Worry-Defeating, Circumstance-Defying Happiness by Randy Freeze. So this, I have heard, is like the Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin, except make it Christian. And I love that. I love Gretchen Rubin and the the whole idea of the the Happiness Project and chasing joy in our time here on Earth and um, just perspective, you know, perspective, like the worries and the anxiety get you so honed in on this moment and these little things that you're stressed about um, and the overall perspective of joy and with a Christian twist I love the idea Next, we have The One and Only Family by Katherine Applegate. So this is number four in the One and Only Ivan, or the One and Only series. I don't know. I read The One and Only Ivan recently, which is told from the perspective of a gorilla. There are two other books that are told from two of his friends' perspectives. And then this is, I think, the conclusion. Um, I need to catch up in the series, and I think I would love to read this one. Next is May 10th, which is an odd day, but it's an indie pub book called The Divorce Lawyer by Ellie Monago. Um, This is about a woman who is a divorce lawyer, and she has to defend this gross guy because he's got some secrets. And so he's she's involved in this case and watching the woman, and um, she's got like a really moral um, conundrum going on because she doesn't think that like she's defending the right person, but he's kind of blackmailing her into it. So we'll see. Next is May 14th. We have The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren. So um, The Unhoneymooners was good for me, but not great. I'm not like obsessed with it like so many people are. And I kind of get similar vibes to this. Maybe it's just the cover. But this is about a couple who gets married in college for convenience. And she thinks they get divorced like when they graduate. Well, now it's many years later and he needs to be like there's a clause in his inheritance that he has to be married for five years before he inherits uh like his family's grocery chain or whatever and so he asked her to come back to meet his family and she is really kind of rough around the edges and his his family's not and i think they like actually fall in love i don't really know i may be botching the synopsis of that but i'll probably try it just because christina lauren wrote love in other words which is one of my favorite books ever and that's kind of their black sheep book but i love Love it, and we'll continue to read their stuff. Next is The Five-Year Lie by Serena Bowen. So this is, Serena Bowen, I think, writes a lot of romance, but she also has, like, dipped her toe in thriller, and this is one of the thriller books, and this is about a woman whose lover, dead lover, sends her, like, an SOS text that's like, hey, meet me here, I need help. And so she goes to the spot where he says to meet her, and he's not there, but she thinks he's been dead for five years, and she finds out that Everything has been a lie. I don't know if he's actually alive or what, but somebody is still lying to her. We don't know why, but I'm sure we'll find out. 
Next is Lovers and Liars by Amanda Air Ward. So this is about three sisters who reunite for a, a destina- destination wedding in an English castle. And um, they were super close, but then like lies and things tore them apart. The three sisters couldn't be more different. One is a widowed librarian who is about to remarry. One's kind of the golden child who has the perfect life. And one can't even afford this trip, but she's lying to her husband and everything. And so... I don't know. Lots of secrets. Again, like I've said, I love stories about three sisters because I have three girls and I just can see, like, I picture them in 20 years and I think it's funny. Next is The Situation Room, The Inside Story of Presidents in Crisis by George Stephanopoulos. So this is a another nonfiction um, kind of history book about um, what happens inside the, the Situation Room, which was a room created by Kennedy, I believe, um, and it's where they go when crisis happens. And George Stephanopoulos was um, like the senior advisor or something to Bill Clinton. He's a GMA, um, Good Morning America anchor, and yeah, he's got some inside political information, and it's his book book about that. Next is Tired Ladies Take a Stand by Gretchen Anthony. And I feel like this is my anthem, like Tired Ladies Take a Stand. So it's about these four friends who in their 20s, they said yes to everything. They made it kind of their motto for a year to just say yes to everything. And you guys, when I say this may be my memoir, because my friends and I in high school and college and things, we had the worst FOMO. We like were the kids who wanted to be doing something every single day and like something huge, something fun, something out, something energetic. Just say yes to everything. Do everything. And now these women, these four women are in their 40s, and they are flipping the switch and trying to make it a year of saying no. Because now they're mothers, they're career people, they're people who are juggling 45,000 balls, and they need to just say no. And, like, I I, I feel this book to my soul. So, um, yes, life kind of weighs down the, the ability to say yes. And um, I'm excited to see how this goes. I think it's going to be funny. I hope it's going to be relatable. We'll see. And then we have Under a Summer Sky by um, Sue Moorcraft. This is about a woman who goes to an island named Sky, and she's a gardener. Everything's great, and then a somebody from um, the mainland comes and like threatens to um, kind of spill some secrets, maybe, and she has to like confront her past and family she's never met. I don't think this is like sinister. I think it's more like finding family and family secrets and stuff like that. And so we'll see. Next, we have May 21st. We have Wish You Weren't Here by Christy Schilling. Um, This is a debut, and it says for fans of Rebecca Searle and Tessa Bailey. So this is our second Rebecca Searle um, comparison. But this is about a girl who goes to Italy to complete law school and um, fulfill a promise to her mom who has died. And she fully expects her boyfriend to propose before she goes, but he doesn't. He breaks up with her. And so then this guy comes and picks her up from the airport, like for he's doing a favor for his aunt and uncle or something and um come to find out she's his ta and it's kind of like an annoyance to romance uh situation that sounds cute just set in the italian italian side like countryside maybe i don't know it sounds like the perfect summer read then we have Butcher by Joyce Carol Oates. So completely different tone. This is a um, about a woman's asylum in the 19th century and a doctor who wants, uh, a, a terrifying doctor who wants to change the world. That's the blurb. This is based on true stories of um, experiments that were done on women in this 19th century as- asylum. And that's terrifying to me. It's terrifying to me, but I am still intrigued. Next is One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. So I've read maybe one or two Ruth Ware books, and I have said I've broken up with her, but I think I am not. So this is a, and then there are none retelling, about five couples trapped on a storm soap island. There's a killer among them. Uh, I mean, from the synopsis, and or at least what I read of the synopsis, it's a pretty generic thing, but I'm I'm really willing to give Ruth Ware another try because I, I'm curious. Um, next is Better Left Unsent by Leah Louise. So Le- Leah Louise is the author of Eight Perfect Hours, and I really enjoyed that book. This is about a woman who um, just like vents her frustrations with everything in emails, and she just saves them as email drafts. But then one day, like the server goes wild, wild and all of her emails get sent. And so, of course, uh, it's kind of like uh, to all the boys I've loved before, that gets out. I'm sure it's got repercussions, and we'll see what they are. I just think it's so funny because I'm not a journaler. Um, I am more of a, like, verbal spewer. And so I have a f- few friends that I, like, verbally spew things to. And I think about, gosh, what would happen if those things got out? Like, because you have to vent your frustration somewhere, and lesson learned, don't ever put it in writing. 
Um, next is Attached at the Hip by Christina Riccio. So I have not read Christina Riccio's books that are book that is super popular, but this is um, like blurbed as Survivor meets The Bachelor. So this is about a woman whose life kind of has hit the fan. Um, so she goes on this show that is like Survivor, but it's got a romantic twist and her high school crush is there. So I don't know. Sounds fun and funny. Next is I Hope This Finds You Well by Natalie Sue. Um, this is also an interesting email-based book about this girl who writes emails in white, which I don't know why that doesn't seem whatever, but it gets out. And so she has to attend like sensitivity training with this HR guy, but something, and she's also like on strict email restriction because this is at work and she is the type that like wants work to stay at work and doesn't want to socialize with her coworkers or anything. And something happens like in this, in this situation where there's an IT mix up and she gets access to everybody's emails, everybody's personal emails, everything. And as she's going through them, which it's like, gosh, you shouldn't go through them. But as she does, she like her walls are coming down and she is being more endeared to her coworkers, which I think is good. And she's also following for the HR guy who is teaching her sensitivity training. So I don't know. Sounds interesting. Um, next is The Lost Letters from Martha's Vineyard by Michael Callahan. So this is told in dual timelines between 1959 and present day. So 1959, there's this woman who has kind of escaped her Nebraska roots, small town, and become this like Oscar winning, I think, Hollywood actress until she disappears. She just vanishes. Now it's like 60 years later and this gal is um, trying to pack up her grandma's attic and she finds some stuff that says that her grandmother was this famous actress. And so she is like retracing things, gets back to Martha's, Vi Martha's Vineyard. And um, I think there's a romance for her, but also finding out more about her grandmother and what, what her, what happened, how she went from this actress to her grandmother and how there were no connections in between. Next is Mind Games by Nora Roberts. So this is a romantic suspense about a couple. They take their kids to Kentucky, I think, to spend two weeks with their grandparents as they do every summer. And um, then the family, the parents go back to Virginia. Well, the grandmother and the daughter have this skill where they have visions and they have visions of the parents being killed. And so I think they maybe are trying to stop it. I don't really know. Um, but goodness gracious, is that a skill or a, is it a gift or a curse? I don't know. But. Then we have When We Were Silent by Fiona McPhillips. So this is a Irish book about uh, kind of an outsider. She's kind of a blue collar gal and um, going to this elite private school in Dublin. She starts to kind of expose some of the private school secrets and then like a dead body shows up at her feet and she's clearly being threatened. So she stops and now it's like 30 years later or something and somebody calls her and need, is suing the school and needs her to testify. So all of that is kind of brought back up and what all's going on in this elite private school definitely has some dark academia vibes and something I'm interested in next is May 28th we have look on the bright side by Kristen Higgins I love Kristen Higgins and will probably read anything she writes but this is about a girl whose dreams are falling apart she thought she would be married um, and her relationship is falling apart she wanted to be an oncology doctor and she just got released from the oncology department for being too emotional um, which goodness gracious can't blame her you know all of her dreams are just things aren't going according to plan and she likes her plan which I can relate to so then um, there's this doctor oncology doctor I think who is referred to as Dr. Satan and he needs a date to um, a, a wedding or something and so she agrees to go because she thinks it might get her back in the door for the oncology department and she goes to this wedding with him and falls for his family especially his like estranged brother so there's going to be some interesting dynamics there um, she also lives with her mom and her landlord who have like a little friendship and so it's those three women um, like I said I she does such a great mix of romance and women's fiction I think this will be great I don't know how the two stories are going to like be juxtaposed, but sounds good. Then we have If Something Happens to Me by Alex Finley. Um, so I've never read an Alex Finley book, um, but this one is about a guy who um, is present when his girlfriend is killed. She they, like he she's taken out of a car or something and killed, and he's there. Um, he is not convicted because there's no body. They can't find the car. Like they can't find anything to convict him, and so he is innocent and changes his name, changes his life completely, and goes to Italy to I think do law school too, which is interesting. Um, and then his dad calls and is like, "Hey, they found her car. They found her body with two other guys, and there was a note in." there um that said for in her handwriting if something happens to me or if you know whatever um 
And so then it's like he sees this guy in Italy that has kind of haunted his nightmares. So I don't know if it's some sort of chase. Um, it says it's like who would have thought that a like Kansas detective would be the one that helps him. And so I mean Kansas representation. I don't know, but I'm I'm intrigued. And again, European settings. Just I have some wanderlust right now, and I want to do some armchair travel because goodness gracious, we're not going to Italy anytime soon. But it's gonna sound it's gonna be great to read about anyway. But that is everything coming out in May. I'm sure I missed some, but you guys, this list was daunting to go through because I keep track as I like hear about things and then I'll do like a little, sometimes NetGalley, but NetGalley I can get on a long tear. I'll do some Amazon. So I, I get these from all different sources and I just keep track of them throughout the year as I'm hearing about things. And then right before I film, I go through and relook at what all the books are about. And by golly, this is a list. So um, let me know what I missed. Let me know what you're most excited excited for and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.